Hi, Dr. Lichtenthal. Thank you for your time this afternoon. First of all, ASCOM stands for Ultrasonic Cardiac Output Monitor, and we are an Australian-based company. We believe that hemodynamics are very important and that objective measurement of hemodynamics leads to improved outcomes and lowers costs. USCOM is the best non-invasive hemodynamic measurement system. The USCOM device is a serial cardiac output monitor that uses continuous wave Doppler as the background technology. Doppler is completely safe. It's been around for over 30 years. This monitor can be used in all sorts of clinical environments and it can be used on patients from neonates all the way to geriatrics. Okay, let me give you a brief demonstration of the ESCOM. This is the probe. It works in both kids and adults. It's 2.2 megahertz. All you need, the only disposable, is the gel. The probe can be placed in the suprasternal notch or the left parasternal edge. It measures flow either through the aortic valve when you place the probe here or through the pulmonic valve. So you can assess left and right sided function with the ESCOM, which makes it unique. To get into the user interface, you touch open. My file is already in here, so I'll select OK, and then go to New Exam. This patient detail screen shows the required information, including name or patient ID. As you see, I have a name here, height and weight. BSA is calculated by the device. OTD stands for outflow tract, and we have pulmonary and aortic. If I touch pulmonary, you see that the outflow tract measures 2.26 centimeters. If I touch aortic, you see that the algorithm gives 2.05 centimeters. If you want to override this measurement, for example, in a patient that has aortic stenosis, touch the measured box and scroll down to the valve area that is correct for that patient. Gender is the final parameter here. The other parameters are optional, including date of birth, address, and operator. What's your algorithm based on? The algorithm that we use um, to figure out the diameter of the outflow tract is based on height. If the patient is above 50 centimeters, the exception to that is when the patient's below 50 centimeters, um, it's a weight-based algorithm. The um, height-based algorithm is based on the work of Nydorf in the early 90s that showed that the aortic outflow tract correlated well with height. And in kids, below 50 centimeters, it correlates much better with weight. This brings us to the work screen. It's a velocity time scale here. So we have velocities in meters per second from 0 to 1.2. And you can see the entire list of parameters are displayed here. The major clinical parameters that we have include cardiac output, cardiac index, stroke volume, SVR, heart rate, and stroke volume variability. There are several other parameters. If you're interested in those, you can choose them. Also, you'll notice a parameter here can be displayed in real time. So if we want cardiac output displayed in real time, for example, we can just touch cardiac output right there. To measure flow, you just take the gel and place a small amount on the end of the transducer. Gel is the only consumable with, with the product. And I'll show you the aortic acquisition here. So I just touch start, place the probe on my neck, and I'll acquire a jet. Once I'm happy with the signal, I touch freeze. And you probably noticed the automated tracing system that was tracing over the profiles. That's called Flow Tracer. And what it does is it eliminates some of the error involved in manually measuring profiles as they do in Echo. Once I touch Save, you'll see a little crosshair hair appears down here on the trend graph. So that's my first measurement. And you'll also notice that all of the values for the parameters show up on this chart. If I want SVR, systemic vascular resistance, I can just touch on that box and the SVR pop-up screen appears. To get SVR, you know you need pressures. So we can enter pressures for me, a CVP if you have it on the patient also, and now you have an SVR. So all of your parameters are fulfilled. You can also form a report by touching on this report and go to any number of choices here, different types of reports. 
This will give you a full report on the exam. There's also a patient tab here that I can go into. This shows the, the major feature of the SCOM device, which is its capability to show trend. Uh, you can see all of my exams, a large history is formed here, as you want on a patient in the ICU, for example, or in the emergency department. And we can look at any individual exam by just touching on the exam. Another nice feature of the software is that you can select the number of parameters you want to be displayed. You can either have four, six, or nine. So obviously four allows for the biggest display of the numbers. It's a little easier to read. Nine just provides more information on the front of the screen. So we'll choose six for this example. And all the parameters above the line will be included in the display. If, for example, you want cardiac index, you just need to move it up into that group. When you're happy with that, OK. So now the display is customized for your use. If you're using it in pediatrics, for example, sometimes they're more interested in index measures and they'll put those on their display. Once you've collected all the data you're interested in, there are several ways to save it or download it, one of which is called a screenshot. So if you want the, this exact screen as is, you just place a USB flash stick in the back of the machine and touch print. If there's a USB flash stick in, it saves it. If there's a printer connected, it will obviously print. You can save the data in, a for in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. You can also go into the patient tab here to look at more of a history on the patient. As you can see, I have a bunch of exams saved on myself. And whichever parameter you're particularly interested in, whether it's stroke volume, cardiac output, SVR, We'll put it on cardiac output for an example here. You can look at the change over time. So if this is a patient that you're giving a fluid bolus to or a change in drug therapy, you can look at your changes over time with the idea of improving their cardiac output to the optimal point and not overfilling them with fluid, for example. Do you have any studies on accuracy? Has the device been validated? Yes, we have um, two published validation studies comparing the device with PA catheters and another one comparing the SCOM with flow probes in dogs. They all show very nice correlations. The, the device has also been compared with the Cardio West Total Artificial Heart and some of the original work was done in artificial circulation. What's the difference between this machine and my TE machine, my regular ultrasound? Do you can get cardiac output from TE or standard echo machine. The difference here is that the USCOM is used for trending measurements and the echo machine requires of a highly trained operator, sonographer and a cardiologist to interpret the data. This is portable, much easier to use. Uh, nurses and technicians can be trained to use it and it can be taken in, a, in and out of the room as frequently as needed uh, to monitor patients whereas the echo machine is much more inconvenient to bring into the room at, you know, in the middle of the night, that sort of thing. And it's also much more expensive uh, to operate, much more expensive piece of equipment, and the operators are more expensive to have available. So, port so port you're selling portability, is that what you're telling me? Right. Okay. It's entirely portable. What about your battery storage time? What's your battery storage time? The battery lasts two hours when it's fully charged, which is another nice feature, making it more portable and useful in rescue type situations. So you have a teaching protocol for non-physicians as well as physicians? It takes about 20 to 25 patients that you need to practice on to feel confident in your use of the device. And we actually have a published study that I gave you there that uses what's called the Fremantle Protocol. And this is a group of emergency physicians that had no ultrasound experience. They wanted to see how long it took them to uh, have less than 5% difference in measuring the same patient. And they found that it took approximately 20 patients to reach that point. USCOM is the only truly accurate non-invasive system.